So my name is Susan Lynch. I'm the director here at Central Penn College and Lancaster Center, and I'd like to welcome you all today. This is our information session on our medical assisting diploma program. So before we get started, you see some, uh, you probably see many faces, but I'm going to introduce to you the three other people that will be speaking today from Central Penn. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to let them introduce themselves, um, and you'll be hearing from them throughout the presentation today as well. So I guess we'll start with uh, Kelly, you wanna introduce yourself first? Hi, um, I'm Kelly Little. I am the medical assistant instructor here at the Lincoln Center. Um, what else would you like me to say? Actually, that's all right now. You'll be hearing from Kelly later. She'll be talking a little bit more to you in depth about this field of medical assisting. Um, Carol? Hey, I'm Carol Glass. I am the admissions counselor and I'm and recruiter for medical assisting diploma program. So I know I've already spoken to all of you and I'm looking forward to helping you through the process. All right. Last but not least, Krista. Hi, I'm Krista. I work in the financial aid portion. I've spoke with some of you or emailed some of you. Um, I work alongside Carol to help you through the admissions process, just on the financial side of things. Um, so happy to help you guys answer questions. All right, wonderful. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and get us started into our official presentation. So we will be pulling up slides for you. Um, now, one important note, um, you can certainly ask questions at any point in time if you would like to do so. Um, or you can write your questions down and save them for the end. We will open it up for Q&A at the end, but I, certainly you're more than welcome um, to go ahead and ask a question during if, you, if there's something, you know, that you would really like to address. Okay? All right. All right, so here we have a picture of our Lancaster Center. I don't know... Um, if any of you know where we are located, but we are located um, right off of 30. Um, if you take the old Philadelphia Pike exit, you make a right and you go down the road a little bit and there we are. It's 1905 old Philadelphia Pike and that is a picture of the outside of our building. Um, and we um, were in the space and right across from the parking lot where, you, where High Steel is. So it's, it's really, it would be hard to miss us. <laughs> Our main campus, just for those of you in case you're not aware, the main campus of Central Penn College is located up in Somerdale, PA, which is right outside of Marysville. Okay. So with Central Penn, um, we pride ourselves on opening up opportunities to students from different backgrounds and providing you the education needed for employment and advancement in your field of study. Um, specifically, the School of Health Sciences we are really giving you the hands-on clinical experience and knowledge that you need to get out there and work in the field, especially when it comes to programs such as the medical assisting. So for many of you, I'm sure you all decided to look into the field of medical assisting for one reason or another. Um, you know, for some, it may be a different career, maybe your first career, maybe a, just a a change in work schedule or whatever that may be. Um, but one thing we're gonna do right now is open it up. We do have a poll that you will see, it should be up here on the screen right now, to try to find out a little bit more as far as what is your reason and why did you decide to attend the event today? Um, we do have four choices up there. Now certainly if your why doesn't fit into one of those four, that's okay. But just trying to get an idea as far as, you know, what are you really looking for? <clears throat> okay, it looks like we have two or three out of four that answered so far, it looks like we have. Okay, so, so far it looks like we have two out of the three that answered are looking to a ticket of a career for helping others. And then someone else answered well-paying job. Awesome. They're all very good reasons. And hopefully today we'll be able to talk to you more to help you answer those questions that you may have in your head to decide if this is the right program and field of study for you. 
So with that being said, I am now going to introduce our medical assisting instructor. She um, is the instructor, or one of two instructors that teaches here at the center. Um, and you may end up having her for classes if you did decide to come here. So Kelly, you can go ahead and get started. Hi guys. Um, so I pretty much, I'm the instructor here at Lancaster Center and my background um, is in biobehavioral health and medical assisting. Um, and I have six plus years in the field. Clinically, um, I worked with an OBGYN, I work in infectious disease and um, uh, also laboratory, in the laboratory field. So I definitely have a plethora of experience to like show you guys and help you develop your clinical skills so that you're well equipped to work in the office. So what is medical assisting? So pretty much we are the heartbeat of the doctor's office. So we help with administrative skills, clinical skills, um, and basically we are the in and out of what goes on in the office. So your career options, there are many different options that you can uh, get into after you become a certified medical assistant. The first thing is as a certified medical assistant. You can also be a medical office assistant, EKG technician, phlebotomy technician, health unit clerk, um, medical claims examiner. And there are a couple more. Um, I know another one, you can be a medical assistant um, in the labor and delivery department, in the hospital. You can also do peri-anesthesia as a medical assistant. Um, there's a plethora of things that you could do. So um, your options are really endless. And I truly believe that this career option is a stepping stone. So if you just want to get your feet wet in the medical field, um, this is a perfect place to start because <clears throat> uh, you'll know what you would want to do. So some people, they end up becoming a, cert a certified medical assistant after the program, and then they love the billing and coding part of it, or they love the back office part of it, and they just really build their career from there. Some students, they want to do more, so they end up uh, furthering their education and doing other things like either LPN or uh, RN, things like that. Once they get their feet wet and are really in the field and have that clinical experience. So what's the job outlook? Uh, it's expected to grow up to 19% through 2029. Um, and in the Lancaster County, is expected to grow 20.9% through 2026. And when I talk to different um, employers in the field, they are absolutely looking for medical assistance. There's actually a shortage at this time and they are in desperate need of medical assistance. So we do have duties and these are the administrative duties that we um, do. We answer telephone, emails, um, we greet the patients, we update the medical records, we fill out insurance forms, we also do insurance claims. Um, we also have a hand in some prescription, um, prescription calling and we'll call the, the pharmacy to update prescriptions and things like that. Schedule appointments, and arrange hospital admissions and laboratory services. If you don't have the laboratory in your office, you would um, schedule or arrange for your patient to have the laboratory services at another location. So you'll learn that here as well. Clinical duties, um, taking medical histories. Um, this is when you bring your patients back into the exam room. Uh, you record all the vital signs, treatment procedures, uh, prepare patients for exams, you collect the specimens. So you will be collecting blood, you collect urine um, and other 
maybe other bodily fluids, depending on what specialty you work in. Um, basic laboratory testing, and you instruct the patient, instruct the patients about their medications or different things. And um, I also want to add that you can, depending on where you go and the autonomy that you have with your provider, you can also help with minor surgeries and things like that. So you'll do biopsy removals. Um, some in OBGYN offices, you can do the endoscopy, um, endometriosis uh, testing, um, things like that. Um, so now I'm going to go into depth a little bit more about our medical assisting program here at the Lancaster Center. Um, the program runs nine to two, four days a week, Monday through Thursday. That may seem like a lot, but here's what you need to consider. So you would be here at the center four days a week for five hours a day for only nine months. After those nine months, you then go out into your internship and then you're finished. So in a year, 12 months time, you are done. You'll get certified and work, be able to work in the field. So because, you know, we're offering the, the classes in a, in a long period of time during the day, we're able to get you in and get you out quicker because at the end of the day, it's all about getting the skills and getting the education that you need to, to work in the field. I don't think anybody really wants to to just come to school, just, you know, to, to study and learn. It's usually with an end goal. <laughs> um, so the actual uh, program requi requirements, it is 10 core courses, which includes the externship, which I'm, or the internship, which I mentioned, and 30 credit hours total. Um, again, that just breaks it down for you a little bit more and shows you that it will take you a total of 12 months to complete. The actual courses, um, here we break it down for you so that you can see the courses that you would be taking. Um, you have medical administrative skills one and two, assisting clinical skills one, two, and three, health insurance, and then we have structure function and pathophys one, two, and three. And then of course you would also have your um, internship. The way that these courses work, again, you would have three classes a day in those hours of nine to two. Um, each term. The medical assisting internship is 160 hours of on-the-job educational experience. This is where you take the clinical skills that you learn in the classroom, such as drawing blood, doing different testings and procedures, vital signs, and you'll be out doing that either in a doctor's office, a hospital, some type of clinical setting. They will be unpaid, uh, but keep in mind, this is a piece of your education that you need to complete to then go on to become a certified medical assistant. And what you're also doing when you're out in your internship is almost kind of like an extended job interview. Because if you do a really good job there and that place then has a job opening, chances are they're going to offer it to you. At the very least, you do a good job. You can then ask them to use them as a reference as you then go on your search for jobs. Um, and I know Carol will touch on this a little bit later, but we do have career services here that can help you um, when it comes uh, time to do that. Um, and again, your internship is in your last term. And that's all you do in your last term is just your internship. Now, there is a small piece of that where Kelly will have you come in. It's built into your internship and get you ready for your MA certification because it is an exam that you have to sit for at the end. Um, we do encourage everybody to get certified. Um, currently right now, the two that we uh, encourage students to seek out certification through is the RMA, which is uh, the registered medical assistant offered through the AMT or the American Medical Technologists or the CCMA, the Certified Clinical Medical Assistant that's offered through NHA, known as NAF National Health Career Association. But again, we will help prepare you for these exams in the end so that you can become certified to work in the field. 
some of the program learning outcomes, and the, this is really what you will know how to do when you complete the program here with us. Um, obviously, communicate, that's key. You're going to be working in the public, whether it's in a doctor's office, hospital setting, you will be working with patients, you'll be working with providers, so you need to know how to communicate effectively. Um, treating patients with dignity, respect, and understanding, especially in very difficult situations. Um, proficient use of technology in the healthcare setting. Healthcare settings have their own software, um, which they use for their medical records. So that's, you know, its own caveat in itself. Um, develop confident and ethical professional image and demonstrate entry level skills in cognitive, psychomotor, and effective competencies, which are specified by what's called MAERB or the Medical Assisting Education Review Board. The academic requirements. So all competencies must be passed with an 80% or higher to successfully complete the course. Excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> Sorry, it's just a dry throat, nothing else. Um, so what that means is so if you're in the classroom and you're being tested on your phlebotomy skills, you must pass that competency with at least an 80% to then be able to pass that course. So you, you can't fail one competency and then pass the course that it's in. Um, Kelly and our instructors do a very good job of working with you hands-on, one-on-one to make sure that you're proficient and able to pass the competencies. Um, so if you're putting in the effort and the work, really, there should be no reason why you don't. Um, all required courses in themselves must also be passed with a C or higher. The dress code. Um, as you work in the field, you will wear scrubs. So that's what we ask students to wear. Now, the good thing about this is that you can wear any scrubs that you want, any color, any design, any pattern. Just make sure that they don't have any bad images or language on them, but usually scrubs don't. <laughs> um, but you, you know, you can wear whatever you want. We do ask the students to make sure that they have those usually by the second week of your first class. Um, we can always refer you to some of the places that we know in the Lancaster area that sell scrubs for a very, um, a very good price, meaning cheap. You know, I like cheap stuff, um, but they're good as well, meaning the scrubs aren't going to fall apart after the first time you wash them. So we can certainly help you with that, but we don't make you buy them through the school. And really that's better off. I've been to places before where you have to buy them through the school and you end up paying more than you would if you went and bought them on your own. So, um, so now I am going to turn it back, or I say turn it over to Carol Glass, our Associate Director of Admissions here at the center. And I'm gonna let her talk to you a little bit more in depth about the actual admissions process, requirements, and some of the student services. So I am, we have a poll coming up, right, Susan? Slide, are we up to it? Yeah, there it is. What are your top three factors into, that are playing into your college decision-making process? This is multiple choice. What are your top three factors? Academics, flexibility, size of the school, uh, tuition and financial aid, location, community, support, and counseling. So what are your choices? Can you see this, Susan? I can't see them coming up with anything, is that? Yep, I can oh, see it. Oh, so. there it is. Oh, that's great. Lots of variety there. It looks like academics and flexibility um, and the tuition and financial aid. So definitely something we'll talk about here with Krista coming up and um, that, that's great. We're just, we're happy that you're all here today. And I'm sure for some of you, you've started the process, others haven't. So your big question is, can I do this? And I'm here to help you through the process of admissions. And then Krista will help you through the financial aid process, which she will talk to you about in a little bit. 
So the very first thing you need to do is apply. Uh, we do have limited seating for this program. So if you're out there and you're thinking about it, I would strongly suggest that in the, uh, when this is over, you get on our website and uh, apply with, uh, on our, uh, for our free application. There's an application out there on the website. Uh, we'll have a campus interview together. I'd love to meet you in person, six feet apart, mask to mask, and make sure you get all the other, any other information you need, as well as a tour and see our lab. And, um, you know, if Kelly's here, meet her, as well as Susan. I will need your high school transcripts. Um, you must have a minimum GPA of 2.0. If you're thinking in your head, uh, that's not, I'm not sure it was a long time ago. Don't worry, just request them. We'll talk about it. We'll take care of things. I don't want you not to apply because of something that happened 10 years ago, right? And then I will supply you with two reference letters uh, that you'll need to complete it as part of the admissions decision. And then we'll go ahead and put you through uh, for, for acceptance. That sounds good, right? Not too, not too hard. So now you're a student. So how are we going to support you as a student? Well, first of all, you have Kelly Little. What more, like, she's amazing. She's a great, uh, great person to get you through this program. So she'll always be there to support you, answer any questions you have. Um, but if you, if you needed maybe some time management help or something, we do have a student success coach. Um, we have Susan uh, Lynch, your center director is here. Uh, we have counseling services as well as a writing and learning center to help you through. Now, our graduate success rate at Central Penn College is phenomenal. Uh, we are at 90.6% of our students were employed in their chosen field or continuing their education within one year of graduation. And this is based on our graduate follow-up report from July 1st, 2020. You can access this on centralpenn.edu slash success. I would tell you that no, we haven't had a graduating class yet of our medical assisting diploma, but we do have other programs that have graduated in health sciences and have, are part of this graduate success study. We have a very strong career services department. Um, they do a lot to support our students, resume writing, interview techniques. We have networking opportunities. Um, they're super supportive. So definitely take advantage of our career services department when you become a student. We also have an alumni association and that's a membership that you can be part of at an associate level membership. It's granted to all current students from day one and your benefits include um, the Pennsylvania PSECU, it's a credit union uh, member. You can be a member of the credit union, a subscription to our uh, Pendulum Magazine and free gifts for showing the alumni encourage, uh, engagement office your next term's course registration. So these are initiatives we have through our alumni association. And within a year, a little, you know, you'll be an alumni. So that's an amazing accomplishment and we'll want you to be part of that for sure. So how can I do it? Like, how can I make this happen? Um, once you're, you know, start the admissions process, you're also going to want to start your financial aid process. So I'm going to hand this over to Krista Porter, who is my right hand uh, person and helps me with all my students. So take it away, Krista. Thanks, Carol. Hi, everyone. Uh, yes, as Carol said, she and I work as a duo to help students through the application process. Um, I help with the financial side of things. So whether you're using financial aid by completing a FAFSA, um, have employer reimbursement, or using one of the other several types of payment options that we have, um, I help you through that process. Um, so let's first talk about the types of financial aid. 
Um, so there are grants um, for this certificate program. You would, if you have eligibility, receive Pell Grant. That is um, done through the FAFSA. Um, you could also receive um, potentially the SEOG grant, but those are both need-based. Um, you can also, when you complete the FAFSA, you can receive the direct Stafford loans. Um, if you are a dependent student, uh, meaning you are under the age of 24, are not married, do not have dependents, so on and so forth, um, you could ask your parents to complete a Parent PLUS loan to help with cost. Um, you can look into Central Penn scholarships. Most are um, four degrees seeking, but I'm, that's another area that I can help you navigate. Um, private scholarships, um, and then there's other resources as well. Um, again, employer reimbursement, uh, military benefits, if you are um, a veteran or if you have a veteran in your life that can transfer their benefits to you, uh, state funding, um, and then work study as well. So if you're even considering using financial aid, um, you're gonna wanna complete the FAFSA. Now FAFSA stands for free application for federal student aid. Um, you should never pay to complete the FAFSA. Um, you, if you've never completed a FAFSA before, you do need to create a, an FSA ID, which is a username and password that you will create specific to you um, to complete the FAFSA. Um, I, I, you wanna add our school code so the FAFSA can process to us. Um, if you've never completed a FAFSA before or it's been a while and you want somebody to help walk you through it, call me. I help students walk through the FAFSA all the time. Um, if you're hoping to use the loans, you'll also need to complete something called the Master Promissory Note and the Entrance Counseling. These are required for federal student loans. Um, they are done through studentloans.gov. Again, you'll need your FSA ID to complete those as well, but we cannot give you any loans until we have those on file. Um, really briefly, let's talk about housing. So um, here in Somerdale campus, we do have um, a housing scholarship for continuing education students. This also includes for our certificate students. Um, so it does, part of it is dependent on how, what program you're in. The housing looks a little different as far as cost for the um, certificate students like yourselves. Um, so that again is an area I would like to, I would be happy to help you navigate. Um, but you can also check out the centralpen.edu slash housing scholarship to read more about it or get started with that. So one of the things I want to point out is each situation is unique. Your situation is unique. Um, so there's many potential options, avenues to explore. I'm happy to help with all of those. Um, you'll want to first contact admissions and submit an application to Central Penn College um, so that I can kind of start that process with you. Um, our goal is to provide help and guidance throughout this process and help to apply and determine your eligibility for financial aid. If you do complete a FAFSA uh, and you're just like, you know what, I don't want to use these loans, I don't want to use whatever, there's no obligation. I would help you navigate that as well um, and go over whatever questions you have, the other uh, options available to you. Um, you know, you might find that getting a degree is more affordable than you think, and that's what I help students with. So, um, any questions? All right, back to you, Susan. All right, thank you. All right, so I just want to point out some, some important contacts for you um, in the event that you would have some questions following this session, and I will open it up for questions in a minute as well. Um, Nikki Marhefka is actually the director of the entire medical assisting program and her contact information is there. Um, Kelly Little, she is the instructor um, that you just heard from not long ago and her contact information is there for you. And then of course, Carol Glass, who is our associate director of admissions here at the center as well. Um, so certainly make sure that you have that information handy in the event that you would need to reach out to us following this. 